At the beginning here, I just wanted to reassure you that there are time-stamped chapters along the bottom of the video for you to use if you'd like a more abbreviated version that fits the title better. Really, this video is in two parts. The actual installation itself, which is what you probably came for at the end. But before replacing it, I had to ensure that all of the speakers were working like they should. There was some electrical noise, which could be a poor connection to a speaker, so I went to hunt that down and along the way made a snafu, then a fix for that snafu. If you're in for the process of taking off door panels, let's get to it. Last summer, I was pretty sure of the fix that occurred after replacing the distributor cap and rotor. The link to that video, which is now rendered lackluster since it didn't actually work, is in the top left corner. After that, the natural next step is making the car sound good. During the test drive before buying the car 15 months ago, there was a high-pitched whine coming from the speakers. I would hear it most in the driver's door speaker, but there were more urgent things to take care of, so I just disconnected the radio. I finally got to start working on it around May of last year. The first thing I did was make sure the head unit had proper connections. I replaced all of the electrical tape with splice units. Those worked pretty well a few years ago when I was replacing a head unit in my wife's car of the time, so I used them again. You don't have to strip the wire when using splice terminals, which makes this option nice. That didn't fix the electrical noise, so I went about hunting down the speakers to see if any of them were faulty or had developed a poor connection over the years. Unfortunately, this was before I got the shop manuals, so I ran into an issue that will hurt the hearts of many probe owners when they watch it, but hey, I'm learning from my mistakes. So let's take out the door panel and see if disconnecting the speaker will give us better sound out of the other three. Unfortunately, taking that speaker out just moved the intensity of the electrical noise to the passenger door speaker. So let's repeat the process and actually remember the screw in the carpeted panel pocket.
Similar story, except this time the electrical noise went to the rear right speaker. Those speakers are a lot harder for me to get to, so I stopped searching and redirected my focus. The other reason a head unit has electrical noise is because of the signals it is trying to emit and receive at the same time. The stereo head unit I had was a Bluetooth unit which emits and receives a signal while the unit also receives a radio frequency. So let's get the door panels back on. Actually, let's fix the driver side panel then put the panels back on. While working with epoxy, I figured I'd try fixing the hanger clip from the roof liner. It had a crack on one side and was sitting in the cup holder when I got the car. This fix went through a couple iterations. The first was just a simple epoxy to try to make it work. It didn't and ended up more broken, so I went back and added toothpicks as a filler material for the epoxy. It holds much better than the original design now. By this time the engine noise had come back and it was time to look for more possible engine fixes. Links to those videos are in the top left corner too. Once my daughter and I were finally able to get the engine stutter taken care of, and now it's been two months since that fix and still no issues, I finally felt okay trying a new stereo. This one, luckily, came from a friend's stash of nostalgic goodies. This time around, my confidence had grown in having my kids help out, so we went to the hardware store and instead of splice terminals, we got crimps. If you have little ones, I encourage you to take them to the store for these sorts of runs. Doing the jobs with them is fun, but getting them in the stores just makes them feel more comfortable. You can't teach them to perform the job if they can't get the parts. And while some parts are easier to get online, it just makes more sense to get hardware pieces like this from a brick and mortar. Anyway, we got crimps for 18 gauge wire, and while the video plays of my kids cutting wire and me crimping the two leads together, I have a story for you. I was in a class called Introduction to Electric Vehicles in college. ECET 323, taught by Jeffrey Richardson. He was recounting a time in his own youth when he had a colleague mistakenly ask for wire that was 12 AUG and pronounced it exactly like it was spelled AUG. And the professor of the time laughed, and so the rest of the class was encouraged to laugh. And he was recounting this tale at the expense of this individual, talking about how silly he was to have gotten to college and still not known that AWG was an acronym. This is crap, people. He, the colleague, saying Og, made a mistake, having likely read the acronym most of his technological tenure, and never needed the acronym or correct unit of measure. He was now transitioning to a team, and instead of just getting the wire himself, he asked a fellow classmate for help. Instead of getting help, he got laughed at. This dissuades people from continuing or even entering trades or any STEM field. Please don't laugh at people like this, just say that AWG is actually an acronym for American Wire Gauge, and that the proper unit of measure for wire diameter with a size of 12 is 12 gauge. It's simple, and makes you feel better too because you got to teach somebody. And it looks like we're done. Now, everyone, no joke, I actually cried on the drive later that night. My wife was still at work, which is why I was doing this with my kids in the first place, but once she got home, I took it out, and I couldn't contain myself. My kids and I had effectively fixed the car's vibrations, making the engine sound healthy, and then replaced a stereo head unit so now the music was playing as intended. It was a completely different car from when I test drove it before the pandemic. Everything I had wanted to take care of on that day was finally finished, and was finished well. I made some mistakes, but was able to build them back better, and because of it, I have a car that I enjoy driving every time I get into it. I love this car. 
I was not anticipating it would drive like this after the episode 3 video. I thought I had a long, winding road ahead of me. There's still more I want to do, and currently am doing, but for now, I get to enjoy my car, and that's something worth celebrating. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.